it's official, you've decided to move out and rent your first apartment, but the whole process feels a little confusing. Over the course of my time as a renter and also through seeing my friends go in and out of places, I feel like I now have some information, advice, tips that I wanna pass on to you to hopefully clear up a little confusion and also just give you confidence as you begin this journey. Because it is an exciting time and I don't want that excitement to get lost in the question marks that come from this. I've got two pages of notes to go through, so we are not spending too much time on this intro, but I do want to note that if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. I do vlogs about my life in Toronto and I share productivity videos, organization, self-care, planning. I try and keep things interesting, food, routines. You get the draw. And I think on that note, we can just get right on into it. When you're starting your apartment hunt, I think the first thing that's important to nail down is the location that you're looking within to really narrow your scope. And location has big impact on the lifestyle that you are gonna be having in your apartment and also how much you're gonna be paying for that apartment. Suburban area is usually quieter. You can probably find a little bigger spaces with less money, a better bang for your buck. But with the city, it's louder. It's lots of hustle and bustle. Things are nearby. You can walk to places. Everything's around you, but it comes with the cost. Definitely comes with the cost in downtown Aww. Toronto. Another thing that can kind of narrow your focus a bit too when you are hunting for an apartment is rent control. So in Ontario, landlords are only allowed to increase rent once every 12 months and they have to give 90 days notice. However, units that were used for residential purposes before November 15, 2018, are limited by how much they can increase your rent. It essentially means your rent is gonna be pretty much stable year to year because there's not gonna be unexpected huge increases in your expenses. Any units used for residential purposes after that date, which essentially in downtown Toronto means any new buildings, are not subject to that increased limit. So landlords have free reign to do some pretty dramatic price increases and I know of people in my life who have actually had to move because of those price increases because it all of a sudden didn't make sense to be in that unit. Obviously rent control policies look different all around the globe so it's something you're gonna have to look into for your specific area but I use Ontario as an example because our policies right here might influence someone to be like I'm not gonna look at the newest of newest condos I'm gonna look for something that gives me a little bit more long-term goodness. The, the sun really did just leave us. Another thing to nail down is whether or not you're gonna look for an apartment yourself or with an agent. If you look yourself, you can basically find listings on sites like condos.ca and then from there you will be responsible for booking the viewings and making sure you have all your paperwork in check. All of that is like kind of your responsibility, but if you use an agent, they handle the bookings they get your ducks in a row with paperwork. They submit the offers because sometimes in places like Toronto, you do have to submit offers because there might be multiple people going for one apartment. And with agents, you don't as a renter pay the commission fee. So it essentially is a free resource to use and can be really helpful. I know friends have used agents and love their experience with them. This actual apartment I didn't get with an agent. It was miraculously found by my old roommate's dad one day when he was in the city. And then we booked an appointment to come tour it and snagged it before other people had a chance to see it. It ended up really working out nicely, but in the future, I definitely would see myself using an agent just to make it so I'm not as responsible for, for dealing with all the coordinating. Here you're required to give 60 days notice before you move out of an apartment. So when it comes to searching for a new place, I feel like it's only really, it only really makes sense to do it within the 60 days of your possible move-in date because especially again in markets that are a little bit more hot like Toronto, things do not stay on the market very long. So you are wasting your time essentially to be seriously looking at apartments six months ahead of time because that apartment will be long gone. But that can be a great thing to do just to get an idea of what the market looks like. So get an idea of what a good price 
is what prices get you what so you have comparables in your head knowledge is power so when touring units one of the things that i try and do beforehand is look up possible reviews of the building itself of the apartment of the condo just to get an idea of a if people have complained about any bug issues b if people complain about any building wide issues like that can give you a red flag indicator that mm, maybe maybe that might be not the place for you or maybe that's why this place seems like a really good deal because of this extra catch i also like to make note of looking at things like the lobby and the elevator and just public areas to see are they clean are they well maintained when you're touring the unit itself i think it's really easy to be distracted by a tenant's furniture the old tenant's furniture the way they've laid things out but i do think it's important that you kind of let that furniture disappear from your mind and really pull your focus to the bone of the unit the walls the baseboards the flooring the layout the sizing of the rooms you are renting the apartment not the things within it so it's more advantageous to you to pull your focus to the things that you will actually have to deal with and I felt that very much so with this apartment because when I walked into this apartment I just remember like just this assortment of tables and chairs put in the living room as if they just got shoved against the wall it just wasn't the most aesthetically pleasing looking apartment thankfully because i had seen another place about a week or so ago that was one of the most like dirty units i've ever seen it had like a black toilet and there was a cat smell and there was things that i know that i would have had to inherit if i took over the unit I looked at this place and was like, wait, it's just cluttered and messy, but it's not dirty. It is a beautiful layout. There's a lot of light coming into the space. The rooms are big enough for me and my roommate to work with. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is don't let your first impressions of a unit, whether they're positive or negative, influence your overall thoughts on it because like you can have situations like with my case where the first impression isn't great, but if you're able to take a step back, you realize how much potential a spot has. And then you can also, I think, be on the other side of things where you get so caught up in maybe the view of an apartment or someone's like cute couch and you're like, oh, this is a great place, but you're not seeing the non-working appliances or the really weird water pressure or more issues that will impact your your living reality and on that note when you are touring it's a great idea to try and test water pressure if you can and see if the appliances are in good shape are there any major repairs that would need to be done for you to feel comfortable living in the unit those are things that are important less to do with the apartment itself but the the apartment lease is also something you're going to want to pay close attention to even if you are using realtor like any contract that i have to sign I like to make sure I read it from start to finish and know exactly what's within it. You do not want any surprises down the road about things in your lease that you weren't aware of. So please read, read your lease, read any contract that you have to sign. What are the costs that come with renting, moving into a new apartment, that sort of thing? At bare minimum, you have first month's rent, last month's rent that you have to give right away. There can sometimes be even a, a key fob deposit for the key that you're using to enter the building. Rent is not the only thing though that you have to spend every month. There's also utilities like hydro, water potentially, internet. If you wanna have some sort of home security monitoring set up. Good news about all these things is that it's typically really easy to look up what the average cost for these utilities are in your specific area so you just be like what is the average cost of hydro in a toronto apartment and you can probably find a really good estimate so that you have an idea when you're budgeting what the actual reoccurring monthly costs are because all those utilities do add up wrenches insurance is another monthly expense that although not the most expensive thing in the world will save your butt if anything happens to the items within your apartment like a few months ago as you guys know or you may know i had a pipe burst in my bathroom sink that caused a lot of water to come into my apartment and thankfully none of my furniture had been damaged from it but if that water had kept going and it had affected the furniture i have within it i would have been able to go through insurance and not have to cough up the cost of replacing that myself i think renters insurance is one of those things that sometimes you even have to show proof of when you sign a lease but just in the case that it's not 
and or you've never heard of it before it is absolutely something i would recommend getting other things to consider are moving costs like are you gonna get movers do you need to get a moving truck all that any supplies cleaning supplies for cleaning your unit is there going to be increases or decreases in your transportation costs depending on if you need a car or if you're going to use subway or buses or bikes whatever it is and then there's of course the cost of furnishing an apartment which we're going to get into more details about that process in a little bit but like renters insurance and utilities this is another thing that you can get a really good estimate of how much you need to spend on those things by going online move-in day is such an exciting day i don't know about you but i love watching people do move-in vlogs on youtube i can never get enough of them because there's something about the excitement that someone has towards a new place that is just intoxicating. And as exciting as move-in day can be, I think it's also an opportunity to, again, protect your future self by capturing photos and videos of the apartment before any of your furniture comes into it so that you have clear evidence of what space you are inheriting. And this is really great information to have captured because when you move out and if say there is like a scratch on the floor or something that was there when you moved in and you've documented it, and your landlord tries to blame you for it, you can have evidence that, no, this is what it looked like last year, and then you're not gonna be responsible for it. Obviously, you know, you should tell your landlord right away about any issues that you're seeing with the apartment so they can be fixed, but especially when security deposits are involved, you want evidence on your side, you know? Before furniture comes in, I also think this is like the best time to do a deep clean, like the deep clean of the tub and the toilet and the appliances. You know, once furniture and boxes come in, things start getting crowded and crazy. But if you can just use that opportunity when you've got a blank plate, blank plate, a blank plate to deal with all that so that when you're putting stuff away, it feels fresh and good in yours. Mm, it's a good time. A tip that I've seen in moving vlogs that I didn't do when I moved into this apartment, but I'm definitely going to do when I leave and move into my next place is having a, a first night box. So a box or boxes filled with the things that you need right away on your first day in the apartment or the first night. So like bed sheets, maybe a paper towel roll, a hand soap, your skincare stuff, maybe a, a change of clothes. I don't know, just those things that you're not gonna wanna go hunting through all your various boxes for. I just think it's a genius idea and takes the pressure off from having to unpack everything like as fast as possible on that first day or two, because at least the things that you really need, you know, you have access to. Furnishing a space is my favorite part of the moving in process. I love having a blank canvas to kind of work with and to rethink how, how my layouts are gonna be, where I'm gonna put these things, what kind of vibe I want for my decor. And I think that excitement can sometimes push you towards making a lot of purchases all at once for furniture, for decor, for you know whatever you need because you're so thrilled to make this place feel like home and you want it to feel like home as soon as possible. Someone who kind of got caught into that when I went from living in this apartment with a roommate to then living in it on my own. I had to do a lot of furniture buying at that time. I do think there is benefits to slowing down that process, not only because slowing down your shopping for big pieces of furniture and decor and stuff can help you actually look for deals and save money, which is a big deal during a moving process because moving can be quite costly, but it also means that you have time to actually ensure that the pieces that you're bringing into your space are things you really love and aren't just putting in there because they, they, they fit the gap that needs to be filled, that you feel like desperately needs to be filled right away. There's gonna be those things like a bed, maybe a couch or dining room table that you kinda wanna get going on right away because they're more essential pieces to your home. But if you can get into a space and then slowly add in things, slowly fill it up. I think it'll mean that you're making more intentional decisions because you'll actually know the needs of the space. On that note, a tip if you are moving out for the first time and you have no furniture, no, no kitchen gadgets, no nothing, you're really starting with zero, is to take advantage of the time between now and your move-in date. If you know for sure you're moving out in six months or three months and be on the lookout for deals for things like a can opener or a spatula toothbrush shampoo like those those essentials that you know 
no matter what you're gonna need. But if you if, are forced to buy them all at once when you move in because you you desperately need things, then you might lose out on some on some good deals. In a world that often praises home ownership, I feel like renting can often get brushed off as like a waste of money and something not worth putting time and attention into. The reality of buying property is that mortgages and the costs that come with mortgages can often be vastly more than the cost of renting. I actually read The Wealthy Renter by Alex Avery this year and it targets specifically the Canadian real estate market. And he says on page 29, in every major city in Canada, it is cheaper to rent a home than it is to buy a home in Montreal, Ottawa, Edmonton, Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver. And I highlight this because renting does give you that flexibility to be in areas and locations that you might find more advantageous or more attractive that otherwise as a buyer you would not have access to so renting can just like give you more opportunities just in terms of location as a renter you also don't have to deal with any unexpected costs any damages that happen to appliances leaks issues they all go to your landlord and they're responsible for paying them and those costs can sometimes be really unfun surprises if you were the one responsible for covering them plus there are lots of other investment vehicles for renters outside of real estate that can encourage long-term savings i do think that is a conversation that's important to have about how are we saving for our future selves and how are we making sure that it's a consistent part of our money routine but I, I think sometimes like there's so much shame that's put towards renters because they're not using a forced saving option. And I don't even disagree that it's a good one. I just think it's not the only one. I would hate for anyone to rent to ever feel like that they shouldn't take pride in their, in their home because that's what it is. It's your home. Just because you don't own it doesn't mean it's not the place where you are gonna come home every night and relax and wind down and be your safe place. Whether you're gonna live in a place for a year, two years, five years like me or many more years, I think like putting that extra detail into making it a space that you love being in is very much so time well spent. Having fun with things like removable wallpaper like I have here or tile decals, carpets, pictures, you know, whatever it is that makes the space feel more like your own, I think is just gonna make your time in the space feel just a lot more special. Moving into a new space, moving to a new area of the world, like whatever it is you're doing, it's just so thrilling to start a new chapter. And you know, it's nice to kind of try and empower us with information so we can focus on the good stuff and not get so intimidated by all the more technical things that we have to think about, the boring stuff. I mean, like no one thinks about moving into their dream apartment and it's like, ah, yes. And then I'll get renter's insurance. <laughs> If you've got more renting questions, then leave them in the comment section down below. I'm obviously not a renter expert, but I've been renting for a bit. So hopefully some of the stuff I was able to talk about today was helpful if you are in the beginning journeys of renting. I wanna do a renting focused decor video. So if that's of interest, also let me know in the comments below, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Until then, bye everyone. The apartment I am currently renting also says goodbye. Toodles. There have been many people outside my window looking at me today, so that's been fun.